So welcome everybody. Welcome to tonight's um, energy play shop. This is play shop number 54. And our topic tonight is on the third eye chakra. So we talked about the throat chakra, how to, what's the significance of the throat chakra. And also we did a group clearing um, on that chakra last week. And this week is the third eye. In case you haven't noticed from the, uh, the graphics. <laughs> so welcome everybody. And um, as before, we're going to have, uh, in, in a, a short while, we're going to have a um, presence meditation. And then I'll start to go and talk about the significance or anything that is noteworthy about the third eye chakra. And... Um, and then also how to notice if your third eye is in balance. And then we will, um, we're going to do a group clearing on the third eye area. So welcome, welcome. Let's begin. Let's begin by just doing our presence meditation. So just take a deep breath in. So breathe in deeply and slowly through your nose. So take a deep breath in. Allow your chest to fully inflate. And when you can breathe in no more, then start to breathe out slowly through your nose again. And then breathe in deeply through your nose. And breathe out through your nose. Breathe in again deeply through your nose. And breathe out when you cannot breathe in anymore. Continue to breathe according to the rhythm of your own breath. <laughs> And set the intention that you want to elongate your breath as much as it is still comfortable for you. When you elongate your breath, you are actually sending a signal to your body that it is safe, that you're in a safe environment. So your body would pick up on that signal and start to relax. And also if you intentionally allow your own muscles to relax as well, especially around the neck, shoulder and back area, just allow your body to let go of as much tension as you possibly can as you breathe out and as you breathe in, just put your all of your focus and intention on your breath as though if you don't focus on it, you are going to forget how to breathe in. So pay attention on your breath. And this way you give your mind a job to do. So it actually frees your mind so that your mind does not have to think of other things while you are doing this meditation. However, even if thoughts do come into your mind, simply allow it to leave without trying to make sense of it. Just focus on your breath. And after a while, when you feel your body becoming relaxed, and also you feel that your mind is becoming just a bit more peaceful, and then you focus your attention to call back all of your energy all 
of your attention. Throughout the day, you have to, you have things to do. You have errands to run, your house to take care of, car to kick, take care of, people, family, all of those things. A lot of things that take our attention away from ourselves in this moment. Call all of those attention back to your body, back to yourself. No need to think about anything, because in this moment, you have everything that you need. So bring back all of your attention. As you're breathing in, imagine that you're actually breathing in all of your attention back to yourself. All of your energy as well. Because whatever you focus on, your energy goes out to them. So when you focus on yourself, you bring back all of your own energy to yourself. Just do this for a few more breaths. Bring back all of your attention, all of your energy. Just focus on yourself, focus on your body in this moment. And feel what it feels like when you actually pay attention to yourself. Feel how that feel in your body. You may notice that there is a difference when you put your energy on yourself. You actually feel more substantial. Even though energy, we cannot see them. Or most people can't see them. But we can certainly feel them. So when you have all of those energies back in yourself, you feel more solid, you feel more present. So allow yourself to notice anything and everything that is within you, what it feels like to have all that energy back for yourself, in yourself. And when you choose to do that, when you choose to be present to yourself and you choose to notice what that feels like in your body, then you can take a deep breath in, one more deep breath in. Let go of anything and everything that does not support you in this moment. Take one more deep breath in and let go of anything and everything that does not support you in this moment. And then just come all the way back into the room. Feeling more of yourself feeling more present to all of you. So welcome back, everybody. <clears throat> welcome back. We are going to start talking a little bit about the third eye, what the third eye is. So physically, it's located um, in between our eyebrows. In between our eyebrows, we have that, that is where the location of our third eye chakra is. And the um, 
organ that is most associated with the third eye chakra is our pituitary gland. And the third eye chakra is really about quantum energy, energy that we that really don't have a physical form. So this is the chakra where we are able to um, translate. So there are information that is um, etheric right? in within the quantum field. There's information, a lot of information out there. And as they come in, as we open, as our um, third eye chakra becomes more open, meaning that it knows how to translate the information that is embedded in that, in the quantum field. And we start to get information that is beyond space and time. That um, it's very different from our five senses. It is, it is really what is giving us our six sense and it can be like even though we see it at, we say that it is the third eye but it's not just about seeing not just about seeing subtle energy it's also hearing it's also how we perceive how we receive those information in and then the ability to translate those information whether it is in um so the subtle energy, how do we translate it so that we can actually be able to see the visual image or be able to hear the, the words, be able to translate the quantum energies that we don't actually see with our um, normal senses and be able to translate it into something like a vision or like a um, conversation or an inner knowing. So all of that is really what the third eye can do. But it's actually a lot more than that. It actually gives us because it's able to translate quantum energy. So it's actually giving us a much bigger picture because the physical eyes, physical ears, all our physical senses, there's a range that our eyes can only see within a certain range. And beyond that, we can't see it with our physical eyes, but our third eye can perceive those um, quantum energies that's beyond the capability of our physical senses. So that actually gives us a much, when, when our sixth, uh, when our third eye is um, able to function properly and be able to translate those information into something that we can see, hear, or know, then it gives us a bigger picture. We are actually able to know more than our physical eyes, our physical ears, and also even without touching with our hands, we can actually be able to feel the quality and be able to feel emotions, other people's emotions without even um, having a conversation with them. It could be somebody that is halfway around the world when our third eye is really um, functioning properly. We can just actually tune in to anyone, anywhere. So it's beyond space and time, meaning that we can actually pick up on information that is not in this moment. We can actually see either into the past or we can see in front into the future. So that's that's all the that's all in the quantum field. All that information is there. It's just that our third eye um, needs to be waken up. And also we need to um, Even though some someone's third eye may be maybe capable, just like a lot of young children, they can see 
a lot more the, uh, of what um, that their parents may be able to see. However, um, we can actually consciously make a choice to not see certain things or not hear certain things, not know and pick up on certain things. So it has a lot to do with our self-awareness as well, because we actually, who we think we are, what it is that we want to pick up on, we have a say in that. It's not that, okay, if you have this set of, um, it's, it's this chakra, then you you would be able to do that. It's, it's really um, a lot to do with our consciousness as well. If our consciousness, if we are open, our consciousness is open to all these extra information. Even now, you know, whenever you decide, you can actually start to open up and be able to um, increase the ability of your third eye to see more, to hear more, feel more. Um, I know a lot of people may struggle. Oh, I can't. I want to see energy, but I can't. It it takes um, training. It takes training. Not not that you need to learn it from someone else, but I think the most effective way is actually you yourself make a make a, um, a choice and you work with your own body to clear um beliefs because if you want to see energy however if you have any um, beliefs that does not support you to see for for example you're afraid that you may see um things that is scary so if you have fear then the that fear will be something that is going to hold you back and block your ability to be able to um decipher visual image or if you don't want to know certain things if you if you um are someone that is easily overwhelmed and you don't want to I don't want to know I just I can only I can barely focus on what it is that I need to focus on in making sure my life is going well in this moment I don't have time for these things so if if that's something that if that's you then um those then your third eye would be kind of blocked because anything any more information is going to overwhelm you even more so so those are some of the mental blockage that can kind of um put a stop to how your third eye can develop and uh, so our consciousness who our sense of self and also how um how ready or how willing we are to see ourselves as who we truly are so who we truly are is really not as simple as just the 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 person that um we think we are we are a lot more than that there's so much more to each person, even the, the, the most ignorant person. There's, there's so much more to us. However, if you are not open to be able to explore those other aspects of yourself, then that is a self-imposed blockage in your third eye. And um, so the... I would say the, the, the most important thing to remember about the third eye is it translates. Um, so it is a perceiver. It allows you to perceive subtle energy and be able to translate those subtle energy into information that may be helpful to you in this moment. That's one part of it. And the other part, because the third eye is also the, the organ associated is the pituitary gland and the pituitary gland is um, um, one of the master glands so it 
when your organs are functioning properly, whatever it is that you feel, you would be able to um, orchestrate and secrete hormones to your body to allow you to create the reality that you want to create. However, when you, um, so it's not just, so what I want to say is, it's not just to perceive, it's also to command as well. It's really one of the command center of your body. So when you are aligned with yourself and you have released the, the blockages to your third eye, you can actually it, it increase your ability to create your reality or the reality of your choice. So I think we, not too many people are um, really good at being able to balance our um, third eye. And I also want to, to talk about um, one more point is it's, it's also about balance. So I, I mentioned that it's about being able to see the bigger picture and also being able to perceive who you are, who you truly are, um, not as this body, but as the eternal spirit that you are. So that actually requires balance. It requires balancing what you know versus what it is that is true about yourself, but you don't know it yet. So the conscious and the subconscious, it's about what's inside and it's also about what's outside. So it's balancing um, the, the concrete reality that you can see, hear, and feel with your five senses, with the subtle reality that your third eye can perceive. So it's really about translating those all of those realities. And because it is about being able to see the bigger picture, so it's also very important in um, allowing you to grow in not just in knowing things. It's not about knowing things. Knowing things is just um, a, a method. But the, um, I think the, 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 the real um, benefit is actually when you know more, you'll be able to make better choices, make better decisions. You'll be able to understand reality not just from one point of view but from many different points of view so it helps you grow in wisdom as well so that is um, a beautiful third eye chakra and so now I actually want to talk uh, some things about the hang on let me just check my notes I just want to talk about so how how do you know that um how do you find out whether your um, third eye chakra is balanced or not so just want to let you know some of the, the the ways that you can tell that you are out of balance that your third eye may be out of balance so some of the ways that would manifest physically is anything, um, so any issues with your round, because it's your head. So any issues with your head, um, with your eyesight, with your hearing, or with um, your mouth, um, and also neck and, um, yeah, neck area, the nervous system. And also hormones, if there are any issues that's wrong there, then you know that it's a physical symptom that there is an imbalance within your third eye. So and I think um, we lots of people really have some 
imbalance in our uh, third eye chakra. And also, if you are not able to make decisions, um, so if you can't really make a, a decision, you always think, should I do this? Can, should I do that? And you just can't make a choice easily. Yeah, there are so many different concerns, then you know that, you know, yeah, okay, there must be some blockage in your third eye because um, ability to make choice, to make uh, decisions and also be able to see things clearly. So your mental clarity, if you feel like there's a brain fog, then you kind of know that your third eye is out of balance as well. And um, let's see, some of the other symptoms of your third eye being out of balance is if you have trouble being creative, if you have trouble thinking um, it logic or using um, abstract or be able to think abstractly or using symbolic thinking if you have trouble doing that then that is one of the mental symptoms that your third eye is um, out of balance or if you are stuck in one point of view then there is that is also a mental symptom as well or if you feel um you're depressed or you feel lonely or you feel or you have hallucinations or you believe or you have delusions you so all of those are really mental symptoms that there is uh, imbalance in your third in your third eye so just to recap the uh, third eye is really about our ability to transcend um, a duality of material world and the subtle world. So being able to balance these two and also being able to balance um, you who you are as this body and who you are as the, the spirit. If you are only thinking you are one or the other, then there is a, an imbalance there. So that's actually all I want to say on the third eye chakra. So we'll open the floor up for any um, feedback, questions, comments. Everybody's good with everything I say. I, I was just I was just wondering you know, there's an awful lot of symptoms for for an imbalance of the third eye. Um <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um mm -hmm. I don't even know what question to ask. It I'm just surprised that there's so many symptoms related <laughs> to the, an imbalance of the third eye. Yeah, it's yeah, because um the third eye is so tied to our brain now and our brain um the organs in our brain is kind of like the command center so when that is blocked then um like it's pretty much uh, it can affect a lot of other things is there also a connection with the third eye and our on our heart center um yeah Yes, definitely, because our, our third eye is about, um, so our heart center is really our connection to our soul. So the third eye is, um, it's more than just our connection to our soul, it's connection to all things that are subtle energies. Okay. So it, um, so you don't just get information about yourself from your soul's point of view. You are able to see all the other people's point of view as well when you have your third eye open and you really use that to get a bigger picture. So it's 
it uh, it actually gives the 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 our soul a lot more information to help it grow and learn in wisdom. Okay. 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 Got it. Thank you. Anybody else? Do you have any um, comments or question about the third eye? <laughs> okay. Um, I just want to throw in this. This is that if you really want to develop your third eye, is actually um, the more you can expand your sense of self. And then the easier it is for your third eye to be open. Because usually when you are stuck in thinking that you are this body and you try to see the world from this body and from your point of view, then it's, it's very easy for you to um, be to see the world from a distorted um, point of view. No matter how well-read you are, just one, if you only get one point of view, then it is limited. So when you try to see, when you try to put yourself in somebody else's shoes, you, um, you kind of, it's easier for you to become, to, to open your third eye as well, because um, some of the characteristic of somebody with an open third eye or a more open third eye is really being compassionate. Because when you can see other people from their point of view, then, um, you it's easier for you to be kind because you kind of know where they are at so when you really decide to do that you kind of give a give a message to your third eye that i'm i'm ready to see things from other points of view and so your third eye would start to grow and be more open when you are able to, or willing to try on other points of view. I think that's my best tip on the, like, it's not about eating certain things or meditation. Like meditation is actually, the um, point is to actually um, get to the point where we don't, we are not uh, attached to our own thinking. So that's the point of meditation is to find that peace and or, or that um, calm in our thoughts so that we can allow other information to come in. So when you actively choose to see things from other people's point of view then you that's something that can grow your own consciousness and that way your own third eye would be more open as well so that you can actually feel what the other person is feeling and know things that's beyond um, just your own point of view. So, and with that said, <clears throat> I'm going to.